I have no more to sh my pants with. Oh, mother. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Run, man. Ah! Oh, look out. He's down the hall. Move. Wrong way. Oh, no. You, you done f***ed up. Is it over? It's over. I remember this. I remember Kaizo Mario. Uh, or Impossible Mario. Um, basically, um, it has been, it, I remember when it was like an internet legend. Like, there were so many people out there saying, it's not real. Uh, pff, it, it doesn't exist. That's just, that's just doctored footage. That's not real. And then is I actually, the same Impossible Mario that the Brooklyn accent dude plays, or is the Brooklyn accent? I Mario, think Mario, fuck you. Mario, f you. I think or so. Goomba, f you. No Goomba, yeah Goomba, f you. I think that was it. And, Who put that there? <laughs> and honestly, I I thought it wasn't real, and then I played it, and. I mean, I don't know why people. If if that was the same video, that video was too long for that to be fake. Like, that was obviously a modded Mario level. And I've seen way less fake things. Way more fake looking but things. But that's the thing, that. dude. Like, people, like, here's the thing. You can't tell the internet anything, dude. Because there's going to be a sect of people out there who will, even though it's not true, they will say it's true just to make it true in real, in, like, in the fandom. That's the thing. That's just like... You want to know how many hours I spent playing Super Mario 64 to unlock Luigi? Too damn many. And guess what? Luigi's not even in the damn game. But yet, <laughs> my dumb ass didn't know that when I was a kid. And, you know... I spent a number of hours trying to figure out a way to unlock the Triforce before realizing that fucking, uh... It was either Nintendo Power or Game Informer's article that the Triforce was actually in the game was on fucking in the April issue of the magazine, meaning it was an April Fool's joke. Uh -huh. like, fucking assholes. <laughs> Dicks. And, and, oh god. So I was like, I gotta know what See, happens if you get it. Some are April Fool's jokes. Some are April Fool's jokes, legit. Some of them are also, um, you know, just elaborate hoaxes. And then there are some that are real that people dismiss and dispel and say, oh, it's not real. And that's what Impossible Mario was. And sheesh, I... Words cannot describe how angry that game made me. Because uh, upon, like, thinking you've got it, all of a sudden, just everything falls apart. And thus you gotta start pretty much back at square one, and one little hiccup, one little mishap, everything's done. It's... Ugh... I just from watching the one dude play Impossible Mario, I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't have any desire to try that. At all. <laughs> well, good thing is Jaden Animations gave it a shot, and uh, this she's is she's braver than me. I guess. Yes, she's braver than me too. So I give Jaden all the credit in the world, and I hope that Switch survives. I really do. Anyway, this is, uh, I attempted Impossible Mario. That's another thing, too, is I'm, if I'm going to try Impossible Mario on a Switch, that motherfucker's going to be in the dock, because I'm going to yeet it across the room when I get mad. Yeah. Like. It just, it was a very, it's a very expensive smash. I'm sorry for saying mother effer in the intro. <laughs> well, I mean. Yeah, think about it. I've I said worse. I've yeah. said worse, dude. A little while ago, so from a nap. <laughs> So, anyway, this is I Attempted Impossible Mario by Jaden Animation. Here we go. You already know Mario. I'm not going to explain him. I'm not going to explain Mario to you. But a lot of people don't know about a little Mario community that thrives in the depths of the deep, dark Mario crevices. I'm talking about Mario Kaizo. Mm -hmm. Mario Kaizo is basically fan-made high-difficulty Mario. People will take base games like Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario World and rearrange the levels to look like this. As you can see, a little more tricky than normal. I've been casually watching Mario Maker and Mario Kaizo content for a few years. I just think it's fun to watch while I'm eating cereal in the morning. And then one day I just stood up and was like, I want to do it. My favorite Mario <laughs> content creator is Ryu Car, so I DM'd oh, him Ryu, asking yeah. if he had any Kaizo recommendations that are, you know, 
beginner friendly. I mean, I'm naturally gifted at video games, but that, oh, well, look at that wave it's, dashing. It's Mario Kaizo. I need a beginner little baby card over here. Cut me some slack, all right? Ryu asks if I've played any Kaizo hacks before, and I say no. And then he asks if I've ever played any Kaizo levels in Mario Maker before. And I say, no. And then he asks if I've ever at least done a shell jump before. And I go, I've played Hollow Knight. And he goes, I don't think that can help you here. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. After a few more messages, Ryu generously offers to train me for Kaizo before I jump straight into a complete ROM hack. And oh boy, that was extremely nice of him and extremely needed. We hopped into a Discord call and as I screen shared the training ROM, he was able to give me tips and pointers of what to do and how to do tricks. So I opened up the first stage called the simple jump and- All right, so this level is anything like but nothing. It's literally called the jump and it's- oh. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Are you picking up on what I'm about to be dealing with here? Anyway, yeah. throughout the session, I learned Trolls. about getting past chucks, getting past reverse chucks, how to deal with lava plants, what slow and fast fall is, balancing on disco shells, precise swimming mechanics, grabbing and jumping on this block thing at the same time. It's weird shell jumps, you know, the basics. I was suddenly getting more. I remember. Yeah, see, this is actually, in my opinion, kind of a lot worse than. Uh... <laughs> what the other dude was dealing with because the other dude was playing like no, old school Super Mario. No, no, no. That, those, that's that's back when people like made the ROM hacks on and, and, and like sent them out in cartridges. Like mm. people were able to like hack cartridges back then and do that. Are familiar with the moves and learning everything and I'll be honest... I was starting to feel pretty good. You know, kind of getting the hang of it The now, shell jump, I, I, I figured out how to do shell jump. And then I hit the test stages where all the mechanics you learned are packed into, like, an actual level. Test mm -hmm. one wasn't too bad. It looks like this and ended up taking me around 20 minutes to beat. But test two was the one that got me. It's a short, fast-paced level with no checkpoints, but... Uh, <laughs> Between the really difficult button input to do the block grab jump thing straight into a shell jump and then land on tiny dino man onto Yoshi I was my armpits were sweating. The last trick you got to do is ditch Yoshi <laughs> and a win. Yoshi but sacrifice. Since I bonked my now head she knows what being sweaty means so many times you can you can see the trauma behind this hesitation here But I ended up getting it after an hour and a half yeah, of the test. Oh, After yeah, all that, knows. Ryu says he thinks I'm ready for the real deal Sends over the ROM he recommended And here's my experience trying to beat my first Mario Kaizo hack Super Ryu World This is how the game starts out <laughs> Of course it You're does Thanks Ryu That's fair Thank you Ryu So, level one I'll be honest Pretty straightforward. Jump on a few guys, do some more jumps, choke right in front of the checkpoint. No. Oh. But eventually I was able to beat it, and I'll admit, I was pretty stoked. This oh, jump oh, too, oh. yeah. You got it. Oh, oh. You win. Yes. I was worried I wouldn't even be able to pass the first level, and I actually just couldn't make this video because I was too bad. But knowing I can beat at least one, yeah. <laughs> Meant more to me than it should. Okay. And the show goes on. Level two is ramping up. You run through Probably and dodge various swamps and stuff to hit a P switch, then run back through everything in reverse so you can get into the pipe that was previously unreachable. After many attempts and Oof. this. Damn. No, let me out. Oh! Let me oh! my way into the pipe oh! and then these two friendly guys. I was really caught off guard Meow. by cats. In Mario game, so caught off guard, in fact, that I just ran into them and died. Checkpoint? Checkpoint? What? What is that? Oh. Yeah. oh. I beat the stage quickly after, so it's not <laughs> work. Sorry, Come on. kitties. Next was this really cool escort stage where you nab this Galoomba at the very start and use them to progress through the stage. It was difficult, but I had a really fun time with this one, and the atmosphere didn't, was really didn't cool. Didn't even know those were called but I guess Galoombas. I was having too much fun. Do what? I never knew those were called Galoombas, or is is that what they're called? I think they are. Or did she just say it wrong? But I think that's because they're like balloons. Okay. I. Jaden, you're you're. So those aren't the. Jaden, you're causing the Mandela effect in my brain, and I don't like it. Named Goombas. What? What? There's the one that is Galoomba does not exist. 
is the third picture there. So they changed their names starting in Super Mario 3D World? Oh, it's because of the of what Goomba represents. Oh, wait. Huh? Ha wait. Oh. Huh? What? The, okay. Na named Goom So they were all like considered Goombas together all the way up until Super Mario 3D World in 2013? Uh, okay. Yeah. And then they were f given the official distinction of Galoombas. Okay, so that's not a Mandela effect thing. Jesus Christ. Okay. Whew, scared the heck out of me there for a minute, man. Jaden, don't do that to me. I got the Mandela effect in my brain enough. I don't need you to keep, you know, stir that pot up for me. Because I let my guard down and Put the video back on screen. Huh? Video back on screen. I thought I did. Shit. Okay. It was really cool. But I guess I was having too much fun because I let my guard down and got real humbled. No! No. Also, the first time I got to that part, I thought the Galumba would turn around and come back. But he didn't, so I just watched him walk off the edge and strand me. Anyway, I had a hunch the checkpoint was right after that pipe, so I knew that if I just got that jump right, I could start making more progress. <laughs> and after like 30 minutes of trying to get back in there, I finally did. On the bright Yay. side, I was completely right about the checkpoint being there. I Bad did not, news. however, calculate this. So... <gasps> I did it! <gasps> There's no floor when she goes Please, through. checkpoint. No! Ah! I'll be honest, that was a good one. I couldn't even get mad. And it's even more funny when after you get the checkpoint, they'll spawn you right above that pipe continuously. So whenever you start again, you gotta immediately hold hard right. Oh, so yeah, I eventually ended up beating the stage. Now let me tell you about the fourth level. Moles. It was a lot of tricky maneuvers that didn't leave much room for error. Also, I thought the beginning was funny. Oh, okay. Trying to jump on these slippery <laughs> little freaks was a bit rough. You this was them. hard. This was hard. This was hard. I did this part wrong. I think I needed him. This guy yes. suicided. <laughs> no, don't do it! Oh. And then it just got worse. The second part of the stage turned into a build a bridge mole <laughs> escort mission. I'll save you all the pain and agony and just save this level. Especially the second half gave me the most hell compared to the upcoming levels Bye. for a while. Wee. Even more hell than the level called Jank Heaven. I don't really want to cover every single thing that happened in every single level, but I can give you a little taste of what Jank Heaven was like real quick. <laughs> that Mario sprite. No. No! Oh, that's a jump that's just hard. I think everything I do here is impressive. To some benchmark. Oh. Dirt. Ah. <laughs> oh. It looks frustrating. I'm glad you like point. had the awareness to do this. <gasps> Holy <gasps> shit! <gasps> oh. Oh, what? Damn it! Shit! Fuck. Forgot, this is the last. Forgot one. to spin. <laughs> ah! You so got, you got the timing average. right. You just jumped a little too early to the game at this point, but then I get to a ghost house called The Waiting Room. Overall, it was a pretty difficult all-in-one go level with no checkpoint, but the one part that just kept tripping me up throughout the entire stage was this part where you oh, jump onto the swiggler, balance on him until that wall goes back up, jump off, and then whatever, do bomb stuff. I just couldn't do the wiggler part consistently at all. Either I would mistime the jump and pathetically hop off the edge like this, or do this, or, or this. that. But it was mainly the pathetic one. I would say probably 80% oh. of my deaths happened on that part specifically. And it technically isn't even the hard part of the level. I really don't think that part was even meant to be that hard at all. But an hour and 30 minutes of doing the same mistakes over and over, <laughs> just trying my best, I realized there was a much easier and smoother way to do that entire part. And I literally wasted all that time making the whole thing way more difficult than it needed to be. Oh. Yep. That's so much easier. Huge. 
Oh my god. I can't believe I've been dying to that wiki <laughs> the whole time. And I could just do that. Oh my god. You probably watch Intended as well. You're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, once I learned that, I beat the stage 20 minutes later. That was that was awesome. Am I upset? No, not really. Yeah, I'm an animator be. that works in Adobe Animate slash Flash. I'm used to throwing away multiple hours of work into the trash. <laughs> By the way, this happens right in front of the goal. Ah, okay. Dup, 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 dup. Be cool, be cool, be cool. You... I <laughs> Jake! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh! I was gonna say Jaden. Jaden said the F word. <laughs> be cool, be cool, be cool. You her. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's merited at that point. I mean, Jesus criminy. Everything she's been through, and you throw that at her, Ryu? You heartless son of a. That's Kaizo. what these people do. I know, I know, but that... Jesus, man. <sighs> Poor Jaden. I, <laughs> I like how she paused as soon as she came out the door. That Jayden. just happened, Jaden. The stages are getting much more difficult at this point. There's only four worlds in the game, each containing around three or four levels, which going into it, I didn't know. I thought there was going to be a full eight worlds, and I was starting to sweat in world three. But yeah, Ryu ended up telling me I was in the home stretch, and I popped off so hard. Woo! I just thought I was bad this no, whole time. No After dabbing, Jaden, please. Pain, agony. I made it to the last world, and oh my god. Actually... Actually, I take that back, Jaden. Dab all you want because, uh, yeah, you you earned it at this point. I usually frown on dabbing, but in this case, I'll I'll allow it. World four, stage one, was the worst thing this game ever ended up throwing at me. I don't even know how to go into detail with all the tricks and moves you need to do in this stage, but I spent four hours on it, an hour and forty minutes on the oh. first half and two hours, 20 minutes on the second. Oh. I know Mr. Beast and other content like that has kind of changed people's perceptions on how much is a lot of time in terms of YouTube content. Four hours is nothing compared to, I don't, 24 hours touching a worm. But I sat there <laughs> making mistake after mistake, She's not learning wrong. and adapting and still failing for four hours straight. It was starting to like get to me. Like, personally. Eventually, every yeah. time I would mess up, I would feel it in my insecurities. <laughs> I love the little arrows Eventually, over every Jane. Time I would Can't carry multiple grocery bags. Mess up, I would Average height. feel it in my... Loud bones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I was going to say, you know who else has loud bones? This fucker back here. Uh... And look, look, your fingers are the worst. Oh! Meanwhile, my hand pops really bad because I broke it multiple times. This is what it sounds like. Yep. So yeah, that's what I got going for me. Also, my thumb hurts a lot all the time. I think I got arthritis in it. And I'm only 33. My insecurities. Uh. Ah! I have no confidence in my own judgment to make important core decisions, but I did it again four hours later. Maybe you don't think that's a long time, but I it is on one level. Yeah, that is a long time. I'm pretty so sure the longest the I tried the same thing over and over again while failing was the second time that I fought Al the Father on Sekiro. I was drunk. Oh, I remember this. Too many people donated to me. I took too many shots, <laughs> and I'd beaten him. In like two tries, the first time I fought him. But drunk, you on were... On the first run through that part of the game. Yeah. Before. And so when I was drunk, I was angry because I was like, I can't beat him. And the only fucking reason I swear to you all is because I'm too drunk to have the reaction time to do this now. And I was like, I know what I have to press. I just go to press it and my finger moves too slow and it's not my fucking fault. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. And I think I spent like probably an hour and a half or so like just trying him over and over again before i was like you know what i'll be back tomorrow and i'm gonna beat him like the first try i guarantee it and sure enough like i came back tomorrow like the next day i first try sober again and kicked his ass again pretty quick and i was like i told you it's just because i was drunk yeah i, 
I was going to say, me, I'm I'm spoiled because of monitors, like computer monitors and this TV, because they have like very low input lag, like less than five seconds or milliseconds. Um, Zach's TV at his house, I went up there because he was having trouble with God of I, Well, I went up there to visit him, but he was having trouble with God of War, and he asked me to beat this one section for him. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I did, and everything went went great. Everything was awesome. But there was an issue. Uh, he hadn't beaten any of the Valkyries. And I'm like, okay, did you find any Valkyries? He's like, I found one. I'm like, all right, let's go beat, let's go beat her. And I, it must have been an hour because the input lag was just so terrible on that TV. And I was just like, and then it, like, like almost a full, like a hundred milliseconds later, then he would roll. And I'm just like, how do you play games on this? And he's just like, very frustratingly, I'm like. Okay, I, like, but I did it. I eventually did it. I eventually, like... Yeah, like, you need to put this up on, like, Craigslist. Take whatever money you can get and buy the smallest imaginable screen just so it'll have a one mil- less than one millisecond <laughs> input I'm like, ch- I'm like... Because you'll have a better oh, time playing on oh a fucking phone gosh. with one millisecond input than you will this motherfucker. Well, and here's the thing. I told, I told him, I'm like, dude, I will give you a computer monitor. Please... Just play games on that. You will have so much, a, a, so much more of a fun time with it. And he's just like, yeah, but I like a big screen. And I'm like, I like a big screen too. But I also like being able to hit buttons and do actions on the same, within the same millisecond. <laughs> huh. But anyway, sorry. Uh, for this, I would definitely need like a zero, uh, like a zero point one or like a one millisecond monitor. Like the the new uh, the new. Uh, like AOC when they have out now is pretty uh, pretty hype. Very first level of the last world. I was suddenly very afraid of this game and what it'll do to me. But surprisingly, the other two levels weren't nearly as bad as the first one. I ended up finishing stage two in only an hour and a half, and stage three in thirty minutes. That was the the, the ego boost I needed to regain some strength. Yeah, I'll tell you that. Stage three boosts my confidence, and stage one keeps me humble. Fair and balanced life, if you ask me. Then I realized I was about to enter the last level. Dude, I'll be honest, I was mad proud of myself. I went from not even knowing if I could build enough skill to beat one level <laughs> to getting ready to go into the final level of the entire game. The Rio hair. Into a call with me to be there for the finale. That was good. That's a good Which meme. basically That's meant a le- he great there for an indefinite dude. amount of time watching me fail over and over on mechanics he's already mastered. Like, like watching a toddler struggle to fit the circle block in the square hole. In good old Mario Kaizo fashion, the level starts out with... I'm going to miss this when I come out victorious. Was that bloody tears I just heard? I think but it was. To fit the circle also, block in the square hole. In go- I love the, the fact that it's Hector. <laughs> You're facing Hector. Not Bowser. <laughs> Hector. <laughs> Hector's secret bed. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't want to know. I just want to see what's going to happen. All right. Good old Mario Kaizo fashion. The level starts out with... I'm gonna I think that is. When I come Jeez. out victorious. <laughs> or just perish on the spot. Either way. Oh, she so got Thanos snap. No. Level, jump on these guys. Balance on Spiky. Do this. Do that. I was a little bit nervous because Ryu was watching and I, I wanted to show him how much I've gotten better at Kaizo. Come on, you know, Jim. like a teacher finally being able to see their student face their final fight to the death battle. <laughs> well, like, not just some school teacher. Like a, a cool samurai teacher or something. I messed it up. Anyway, I was trying to impress him. I got the analogy, Jaden. I just went and did this, and this, and this. But he seemed proud of me anyway for just being able to get this far. I was making some good progress on the level. I was about to get to the final checkpoint, but, you know. Right and jump! Things happen. Even though it was a really hard level, it was still surprisingly a lot of fun. And not nearly as bad as 4-1. I keep bringing it up, but I, you know, it really got to me. But like that, maybe a bit less than three hours later, I got to the final room. It's boss fight time. For a final boss in a Kaizo hack, the fight was actually pretty chill. Not easy, but you chill. These on and off switches control the room going up and down, and you gotta get the floor low enough to grab these little blue blocks to throw at the giant King Boo or 
whatever he's called in this game. Hector. But don't let it get too low because then you can die to the lava right beneath there. Ah! So you're trying to keep all these things in mind, but to add to the pile, these little <laughs> flying boogers meander around the stage while you gotta dodge them. And yes, they're RNG based. They're random. Uh. You can't just memorize their booger pattern and be on your merry way. Whoa. Okay, the Whoa. smart way to go about this boss is to stay in the middle and calculate awful. safe times to go to the sides and hit the switches. But I was being stubborn and trying to brute force my own way to do it. What a little booger. <laughs> Those guys oh, are yeah. He punishes you for standing on the edges, you know? I'm gonna stand on this edge. <laughs> You're like, I don't give a shit. I'm doing <laughs> it anyways. In the lava and then crush. And then, oh, this edge. Oh, as is life. Oh! oh okay, wonderful. I'm gonna stand on this other <laughs> side. <laughs> no! Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> kind of is, actually. Except for the guys that come out of the wall and kill you. But it's pretty like... <laughs> Jade, I'm gonna die on this Center, hill. center. <laughs> I didn't know how many times you have to hit Boo. Mario rules always default to three, but it's Kaizo, so it could also very much be a thousand. They know. No! Oh! Ah! Oh! Okay, it's so now I know you have to hit him, like, I assume five times. Oh. I'm not gonna spoil how many times you have to hit him. Yeah, so I hit him three times and didn't win, so I was like, all right, must be a thousand. But then a few attempts later, this happened. Huh. Come on, Jaden. Come on. Oh! So it was so I, I did get him three times, and you then did, I and just then you died, died too quickly. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? It was three. I just died too soon after that third shot, and it didn't count, which I'm going to choose to ignore. I did it. I <laughs> learned Kaizo, and I beat Kaizo. And it only took 17 hours, not including training. Are there oh. much more difficult hacks out there? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Some of them look so disgusting, I don't even want to be in the vicinity of their aura. But I was able to challenge uh. myself and beat one that was really well suited for my skill set going Love, in. Well. And looking back at some of the things I was able to end up pulling off makes me feel very cool. Look at this stuff. I did that. It's cool. Come on. I want my hard earned credit and applause, please. I think my favorite thing about Kaizo is how easy it is to visualize the progression of your I skill within every single level. I wouldn't even bother level. trying. Like, so World 3, Stage 3 starts off with a really a difficult maneuver that I got hung up on for a while. And then suddenly I'm nailing it almost every single time. You can really feel and see yourself grow within Kaizo. And I don't think you can say that about a lot of things. Does that mean I recommend you try it? Absolutely not. If you get impatient and frustrated easily and are also bad at video games, don't even think about it. But <laughs> hey, if you think it looks interesting and you can stay calm under extreme circumstances and have around 17 hours to kill, I can't recommend it enough. I liked it. Thanks to Ryu for helping me out and being extremely nice and training me and giving me a great ROM and literally just sitting there watching me struggle for many hours. Go check out his channel. He's very entertaining. I've been watching him for years now. And yeah, that's it. I'm officially very good at video games and I have supplied documented proof. Again, if you haven't gotten your tickets, Scribble Showdown is back on tour. James, Don Ross, Aaron, and I are doing a drawing slash improv slash comedy show. And it's, sorry, Ari. It's happening in November and December at these cities. I'm not going to say them all because it's a lot. And you should hurry up and get your tickets because I told you so. It's, it's genuinely a lot of fun and we've all been super excited to get back on the road. And I hope to see you there. Mario Kaiso was also a lot of fun. And if I wasn't developing Carpal Tunnel, I would play nonstop. Thanks for watching. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. You want to know one of the most interesting things about, uh, about friggin', uh, uh, gaming that like, i never expected gaming to develop like have people develop uh you know like wrist problems and finger problems from playing games uh, and then i heard about the situation that one of my favorite smash brothers players korean dj is in his his hands are literally like falling apart Ooh. from him having from him gaming so hard uh, he's also a concert-trained violinist, and he doesn't want to lose the ability to play. But <clears throat> at the same time, it's just like, 
you know, you can only do so much before uh, eventually your, you know, your hands give out. It's like professional athletes. It depends on the player, too, because, like, some people play fighting games way more aggressively than other people in terms of how they press the buttons. Yeah. Because I noticed me, Andrew, and Chance used to play Tekken all the time, right? Yeah. And there was one session where we all played for quite a few hours, and then Chance shows us his thumb, and he's already started to get a blister on his thumb. Ooh, yeah. And I was like, how the... Why do you press the button so hard? He's like, I don't know. I feel like if I press it harder, it's going to work. <laughs> it's like, it's not fucking it not. <laughs> yeah, I had to learn that with wave dashing in Smash Bros. Because, you know, me, I always like a firm br- button press. But when it comes to learning the intricacies of how to move and everything, wave dashing, uh, L canceling, all that, in and all, it's all about uh, finesse. You know, it's just like you have to master, like, the precise button hit so that your hand, your your thumb and your fingers are able to go on and move other stuff or and do other stuff. So yeah, it's, and then there's also like when I was playing Blasphemous uh, recently, like I played for quite a few hours and I was using the D-pad, mm-hmm. and it's just something about the way I roll my finger when I'm like doing the jumps in that game and stuff. You know, like it eventually started to dig in and I started to get like a sore side on my thumb. Like, I had to switch to using a stick, because I was just like, damn, this is hurting my thumb a little bit. Yeah, I haven't had really many <clears throat> many issues in terms of, like, wear and tear. The only thing that I have is, like, I have a writer's knot on my middle finger right here from when I was a kid. Uh, you, they, you know, people develop those from, like, writing and, and, like, pressing down real heavily. And I developed that here on my middle finger, and it, it never went away. Yeah, I noticed I was getting some weird lump on my wrist, too. Like, I was wondering if it was because of, like, the way I set my hands with my keyboard or whatever. But, like, it's kind of gone away. Well, well right me, now, I have I one right here. It, you know what this is? If I press it, it makes, like, a pop sound, and then it goes away for a while. So I have no fucking idea it's what a, that is. It sounds like a fatty corpuscle. Maybe, you ever, I guess. You ever... Because I have one right here on my wrist, and, you know, I've popped it a few times and it's like disappeared but it always comes back the only way to fully get rid of it is for them to like go in and like take it out okay i don't think it needs to come out no 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 or anything no it it if it give if it starts becoming fucking weird like it just freaked me out because i was like i've never seen that before and i just like lightly press and it's like and the, like the the sensation it makes, and then it's just kind of gone for a while. And I was like, "What the fuck?" Yep, that's how they are, man. It's weird as hell. It is, and I I kind of I hate it, but at the same time, it's just part of life. But uh, I was gonna say, if Jaden can beat this, she should absolutely play through the Soulsborne series. I think so. I think she'd do good with it. I I, uh, I anything, don't think there is any boss or part of the entire Soulsborne series that you'll ever be stuck on for as long as you were like one of those Mario stages. Yeah, I mean, Dark Souls. Like maybe is tough. the one she finished in thirty minutes, you could be stuck on a boss for like thirty minutes, but like there there is usually not anything that bad in the Soulsborne. Well, games. Dark Souls is tough. There's no getting around that. But the truth is, it's. <sighs> Like, it's the the pure joy of beating it that that often like that a lot of people talk about is like being the main thing why they do it. Well, here's the thing: a lot of people don't realize about the Soulsborne series either. Mm-hmm. Is whenever Dark Souls first released, the whole point was community. Um, knowledge. Community knowledge. knowledge. So the whole point is not for you to sit down on Twitch, never having fucking played one before, and go into the game and be like, nobody is allowed to give me any sort of hints whatsoever because that actually makes the game 1,000 times harder than it was ever meant to be. Like, the whole point was whenever it started out, people were sharing knowledge they figured out about it, you wouldn't ever fucking know because it's not in the game unless you get online and figure out from people who made the calculations for you that it's 25% equip load is what you need for your fast roll, shit like that. Like, all kinds of stuff that you could find that could help out. Like, there's things that are just hidden in places that it's just you probably wouldn't ever come across. Yeah. And just, you know, various strategies and stuff like that 
we were sharing between each other as we started Demon Souls back in the day is the first one that that started with, you know? Yeah. And then went on into Dark Souls. And now, like, everybody knew this. Like, I haven't played Dark Souls before, so I want to go into it now. Because it can't be that hard. And then they're just like, fuck this fucking game. Like, yelling at their Twitch and stuff, you know? And it's like, no, I don't want help. Shut the fuck up. And you're getting banned for even asking that. And it's just like, you're missing missing the point, like, of Dark Souls. Yeah, I... Like, the fact that Jaden, like, let somebody mentor her on this is like, if she would do the same thing with Soulsborne, I bet she'd have a really fun time. Because I think that she's good enough to... Not really have that frustrating of a time with the Soulsborne series. Over well, <clears throat> I think if you were honest with her and you like were straight, hey Jaden, if you want a mentor for for Soulsborne, Dark Souls, as long yeah. as you don't feel uncomfortable, that I'll straight up admit I have a crush on you. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, I won't hit on you the whole time. I'm and just like you, that, your application has been moved from somewhere in the middle to all the way at the bottom. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! But he is good at Dark Souls. He's beaten all the Souls games, including Demon Souls and Sekiro. So, yeah, he's he's good. I got all four endings of Sekiro. Yeah. Oh, I did beat, you beat Bloodborne? Yes. Okay, good. Including the DLC. Very nice. The, the old hunters. Uh, what what you call it? That everybody is like, he's really really hard. And I was like, it took me like seven tries. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the, I for still me, don't want to fight what's their fucking faces from um, Dark Souls 3's DLC at all. I, I hadn't done that. Sister Freed? Oh. Uh, Sister Freed looks fucking terrifying. Uh, <laughs> I haven't uh, done that DLC yet. I'll say for me, like, I'm kind of scared Blood, to do it. Bloodborne, the one boss that I ha- wanted to, like, it made me so angry dealing with him, the Blood Starved Beast. See, the Blood Starved Beast, once you actually know the tricks and shit... But I and, didn't know the tricks. That's the thing. That's I, why, it, like it, I said, community knowledge. Well, I know, but I didn't I didn't get community knowledge. Instead, I I just roughed it. And because eventually I beat him. There's a specific T- too damn long, way man. that I prepare myself for the Blood Starved Beast each time now. And he's not nearly as bad as he used to be. So, A... Obviously, when you go in, you unequip everything from your hot bar... Except for oil, followed by Molotovs, followed by poison antidotes. Yeah, I knew the poison antidotes. Only three things on your hot bar, so you don't ever have to struggle and fuck up getting the three things you need for the fight. All right, and then secondly, the thing that took me forever to realize is there's a little fucking bell that you can summon. Um, I forget his name. It's Ligarius' pupil. I um, actually summoned him too. Yeah, yeah. With the wheel, like, and it's uh, and he helps you a shit ton by distracting it for the first half of the fight. I remember that. And, and that- the last thing is, if you use the insight shop, you can buy Father Gaskling's armor, and his armor has the highest poison resistance you can get at that point in the game, and that makes the whole fight a lot easier too. Well, I didn't know that, but I yeah. did eventually beat him, and it was a tough. Bo- it was a tough battle, but I'm glad I won. The strategy in general is pretty much just you, for the first half of the fight, you watch for him to bring back his right arm, and then you shoot him in the face, and you get a. Yeah, you get a, a big, stun kill. Uh, attack on him. And then whenever he goes into his third phase where he starts poisoning you just for standing next to him, you fucking light him on fire and kill him with fire. Kill it with fire! Yeah. Oh, God. Anyway, that's gonna do it, everyone. This was I Attempted a P- Impossible Mario. By Jaden Animation. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and hopefully uh, if you want to see more from Jaden, you will check out her channel by clicking her name in the title of the video. Go do it. Click, click right now. And uh, if you want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, leave a comment down below. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you then, everybody.